This is the Vetri U6. It looks absolutely stunning, but is it worth your money? Right now it's priced around 60 bucks, but it does normally have a $10 coupon on it. Let's see what they include in the box, and then take a closer look at the cooler. Looks like we've got the manual, and then in here we've got some thermal paste, and then an assortment of other mounting hardware. Looking at the cooler itself, it's a 6 heat pipe dual tower design. The front fan is ARGB, and then the middle fan is just a normal black fan. But it still looks nice because the entire cooler does have a black finish on it. If you look at the wires, you can see that the middle fan is already daisy chained to the front fan. Another nice little touch is that they did include a daisy chain on the ARGB cable. This cooler is fairly short for being a dual tower, coming in at only 152 meters tall. The front fan does overhang the RAM slots, and while I could not find any official measurements, I measured it myself and found that the RAM clearance would be about 38 millimeters. Of course, you can increase this clearance by mounting the front fan higher. Just know that when you do this, you will be increasing the total height of the cooler. I have to say, mounting this thing was a little bit of a pain, but it's definitely doable. If you're on AMD, you will need to remove the stock backplate. Since I'm on AMD, I do have the AMD side of this backplate up. If you're on Intel, you'll simply flip it over and use the Intel side. For the first step, you'll need these four screws and four small spacers. If you look at the backplate, there are a number of holes where these could go through. So just do a quick check and see which holes line up with the ones on your motherboard. Then you'll stick the screw in from the back and push the spacer onto it to keep it in place. Do that for all four corners. Once you're done with that, you'll want to go to the back of your motherboard and stick the backplate in through the holes. Then on the front, you'll push in each one of the larger spacers onto the screws. You should feel a little bit of resistance as you do this, and if you're not feeling the resistance, flip the spacer the other way. Now that the backplate is secure, we can put on the mounting brackets. If you're on AMD, you'll use the shorter ones oriented in this position, and if you're in Intel, you'd install the longer ones oriented in this position. Then you'll want to put in these pieces. They're almost circular, but not quite. The one annoying thing about these is if you just twist them, they won't go in. I found that to get these pieces on, I actually had to apply pressure to the screw in the back. I didn't really have to hold it, I just had to push it in towards the motherboard so it wouldn't spin around. And then if we go back to the front, you can see that you'll want to use the little wrench they include to get it nice and snug. Then do the same thing for every corner. Once both mounting brackets are installed, we can start prepping the cooler. You can see that I've already installed the front fan higher up to accommodate for my tall RAM, and you may or may not have to do this depending on what you have. But the one thing that you will have to do for sure is remove the middle fan in order to access the screws. These fan clips can be a little difficult to get off. I found that instead of just lifting the clip straight off, you should try to pull it backwards as far as you can before lifting up. And then of course, don't forget to remove the sticker on the bottom of the cooler. Before installing the cooler, don't forget to apply the thermal paste. Once you have the thermal paste on, carefully lift up the cooler and line up the screws to the mounting points on the brackets. Then you'll just want to screw them in, alternating between the top and bottom. Note that you will need to apply a little bit of pressure at first because these screws are spring-loaded. Once you have the screws tightened down, you can clip in the middle fan. If you unplug the middle fan earlier, don't forget to plug that back into the daisy chain. Then you'll plug in the 4-pin connector to the 4-pin CPU fan header on the motherboard, and then you also need to plug in the 3-pin 5-volt air GB connector. And here's how it looks. I think it looks pretty nice. The one complaint I do have is you can see the individual LEDs in the center of the fan when you're looking at it from the correct angle, but other than that, the light is pretty bright and well diffused. Now let's see how well it performs. I will be comparing it against the 224XT RGB, which is a smaller single tower 4 heat pipe cooler. For the first test, we have a 3700X pulling 95 watts in ADA64. At similar fan levels, the U6 performs on average a few degrees better. However, the fans on the U6 are a little louder than the 224XT when on the same level. So once you normalize the noise, the U6 really is not that much better than the 224XT, bumping up to a 125 watt heat load on Prime 95. Yet again, the Vetri U6 performs a little better, but it really isn't the change I'd expect to see from a dual tower cooler, especially once the noise levels are normalized.
So would I recommend the Vetru U6? I would recommend it if you love the aesthetics and you're willing to pay a small premium for it. If you're looking for price to performance, I would definitely look elsewhere. In the description of this video, I will link the Vetru U6, the 224XT, and then several other coolers that I would recommend around this price point. If this video did help you out, please consider dropping a sub, and see you next time!